Well, last week on our legal deep dive, we talked about the case of three people being arrested in the brutal murder of Bernardo Pantaleone in November. But days later, we learned that one of the suspects charged in his murder, Leonardo Santiago, had video of another murder on his phone. Turns out back in March, Osvaldo Hernandez Castillo was found shot to death inside his car in Phoenix. Arresting documents said Santiago appeared to have lured Castillo through Snapchat, agreeing to meet up for sex the night of the homicide. Documents also revealed that Santiago took pictures and video of the crime and shared the images with other gang members on a social media group chat. Joining me now is criminal defense attorney Hector Diaz of Diaz Law. Hector, Santiago is already in jail, charged with obviously Pantaleon's murder, but now this second murder that was just revealed, I mean, does that, you know, have more weight with him being already behind bars? Yeah, he's not, um, you know, I don't need a crystal ball to tell you, he's not coming out of jail here. Yeah. Um, you know, we saw earlier some images there standing next to his lawyer. That would have been the initial appearance where he's in court, to, you know, at hearing now on these new charges. And so, you know, one, murder charges enough. Now, you know, the county attorney has two bites at, you know, the, this apple of, of criminal charges. So. so we heard earlier that when he was making his initial court appearance, which usually is very cut and dry, very quick, right? right. Usually the victim or victims or rather victim's family does not show up. In this particular case, you had the victim's mother plead to the judge, please do not let him out. First of all, I'm wondering, is that normal for victims' families to show up at a court appearance? And again, I mean, the fact that the mother was pleading to the judge, that's got to that's gotta be even more weight for him to be behind bars for good. Absolutely. You know, the first thing, most um, victims don't show up at these initial appearances. Um, the majority of the initial appearances are occurring in the middle of the night. Those courts run 24 hours at increments every three to four hours. They'll bring the, the suspect or the defendant there to court. It's rare to see a victim appear, but they are permitted. And when they are there, the court will listen to their statement in terms of uh, why they should be held without bail, why the bond should be held higher. We heard in another segment that you know there was an IA their initial appearance where right. the victim's representative made you know some kind of plea in terms of, of bail. That's what is addressed during these hearings. Mm -hmm. Having the victim there telling the court. The, you know, the, the, the impact that this has had. This is yeah. a person that's a danger to the community. The court can take all of that into consideration in addition to the statements from the prosecutor who's also appearing often by video, letting the court know the particulars of the circumstances, the seriousness of this, um, the, the, this allegation yeah. and factoring all of that in terms of release conditions here would be surprised if this individual was released back on the streets. So bottom line, it's powerful, but it can be effective. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And I, you know, the county attorney will, and in conjunction with law enforcement, will let victims know there's a hearing, here's where it's gonna be at. Um, the county attorney has victims advocates, essentially victims representatives that will go to these kinds of hearings and, and guide them through this process.